Right, catch up of where we're at. We're back over on the bench. So what I've done is just some basic sort of interior painting. Not put this on cam. It's just real, real basic stuff. But off-white for the interior. All right. Um, leather brown, obviously, for the, uh, the seating. And khaki for the, obviously, the front seats. Yeah. So next step is, and also obviously get the roof underneath a coat of paint. So next step is, is I'm going to give it all a coat of satin varnish. All right, we'll go over satin varnish. Reason for satin varnish is obviously I'm going to now start doing a bit of washing and weathering and it just helps with clean up, if I'm honest. So you don't want it sort of gloss finish. Again, you, you, you want a bit of texture for for whatever you're going to use to to grip but you want to be able to clean it off as well when you've got the matte texture obviously it just grips it soaks in and it's and it's hard to clean up I'm going on the theory this is an ambulance so i would have thought they'd try and keep it as clean as possible obviously if it's out in the field that's going to be hard but you know it's not going to have major wear and tear like sort of other vehicles would probably have um We're going to do the stretches after so i've like i said in the video i've now got my demo piece for doing pillows and blankets so this is out of the gecko kit that's their stretchers which are really really nicely done uh, compared to that one should have prepared earlier there's the old airfix one so there is a bit of a difference but not much i think with a bit of you know making the pillars and, and some blankets and stuff we can liven them up a little bit again i'm going to be using green stuff for doing that so you know same stuff you can make top bed rolls and all that sort of stuff with so they're going to be painted khaki again i think they've got wooden handles i'll just double check but you know a bit of general painting will do we're going to do a lot of weathering with this with phil's wash and as you can see my oil palette all right so ignore the metallics at the top those for some else but you know these colors here and these are just standard white uh, these are dowler and rowley i think we've got burnt sienna uh, yellow ochre burnt umber and that is starship filth which i'm going to mix with that for the interior color like a greeny gray color i suppose to to for the pin washing and and then we can get to, you know, all the, uh, get it all together and, and get some weathering done on it. So we'll go back over to the spray bait again. Like I said, we're going to give it a coat of satin varnish. Trick is with this, there is a new one out, which is the uh, Gen 3 one. I don't know what the difference is, but again, it's satin varnish is satin varnish. This is an acrylic one as well, not a lacquer one or an enamel one. Again, f for, for the time being, I'm going to sort of keep kind of in the in the acrylic route rather than the lacquers at the minute and the um well I definitely don't use enamels only for washing and stuff but yeah good shake up usual thing give it a real real good wake up and then basically just straight out the bottle with this stuff you can thin it a little bit with the ak thinner or a bit of x20a but i find to be fair it, it works pretty well straight out of the bottle just to say with all paint good shake up good wake up if you've got one of the, like the um well i've got a nail shaker if you want to call it you know for for uh, nail varnish and stuff whack it in that for a good few minutes really wake it up and then you shouldn't have any problems at all so without further ado let's get some varnish on it
So let's move on to pin washers. Now, as I've said numerous times, this is probably one of the most powerful tools in weathering. This is going to make it all pop, your detail, your, you know, um, sort of giving it some contrast, some definition. In other words, I don't know. <laughs> so, basic concept, I've done this before, you know, but one of the things I've probably not spoken about before is actually picking the right colour or right uh, tones for your pin wash. So obviously we've got a really, really light wall here or side wall of the, of the ambulance. So if you're going to go in with a black one, a black wash, work fine, but it's going to be really, really stark. Again, if you go for a brown wash, it can look a bit, I don't know. If you want a dirty look, then yes, it, obviously, yeah. But I've just been um, on other parts, as you can see here. A little bit of clean up on this. I presume it's an extractor fan. A uh, bit of clean up there, but I've been using Starship Filth, which if you look at my little palette, which is this one here, which is a fantastic sort of grey green colour and mixing it, lightening up with a bit of white. So you kind of get this sort of grey greeny colour, I suppose, if you want to call it that. And ignore that because that's just dirty thin as well. I've just been cleaning me um, brush out when I've been mixing it. So you've got a colour like this. So again, if you've got a few colours on your palette, okay, you can sort of mix and match and make up whatever many shades of wash you want to be honest you know you the world your oyster kind of scenario so just for the basis of this demonstration all right so the satin varnish that put on earlier is now dried it probably if i'm honest I could do with a little bit longer but we'll, we will crack on anyway so Get the palette back in shot. All right, so take a bit of the Starship filth. All right, usual thing with oils. You don't need tons of it. Gonna and just for those of you, this is just um, odorless white spirit. So I think this is the AK AK one that we. Uh, we sell there's also the abteal long one and you know numerous other people do one as well so get this down to a nice wash consistent set and we'll take a bit of white what's there again just knock that in So again, the joy of oils over the pre, you know, you, you can obviously buy the pre-done enamel washers, which are fine, which will definitely do the job. I just like the blendability of oils. So, just test that on the side here, and we've got a nice consistency going on. All right, I've got a little clean patch of. thinners in there as you can see in that one that's just the clean up one so so we'll go for anybody in the brushes and keeping it quite tight so it's just an italiary double zero or if you're going over to the uh, the AK ones it's a three zero the different ones obviously they're going to hold different things and again i've just got a really old i don't even know what number that is isn't it a leary brush by number three I think something like that i don't know so just to obviously break the surface tension which you don't normally get with oils but if you just brush around and give it a, a coat of thinners 
And then when you come to So you can see that. There you go. And then the compiler reaction will do all the work for you. Any overspill, don't worry about it. We'll just blend that back in when it's dry. So it does look a bit messy, but as I've said before, it's uh, because it's oils. can just manipulate it where you want to go or where you want it to go should I say okay so we're gonna let that dry off and then we'll come back and fully clean it up but again we'll just do a uh, another part Okay, so we've got a there we go, nice join there, touch and flow, let the order the work. Okay. So I say next step is to just put that aside, let the thinners evaporate. Let the oil dry, which won't take long, to be honest, it doesn't take that long. Everybody thinks, obviously, oils like take ages to dry. They do when you've not leached all the oil out, as you can see, all the linseed oil, which has obviously seeped out of me soaking it on the cardboard. But once you get down to pure pigment and paint, it, it does go off pretty quick. So we'll give that a couple of minutes. And as you can see, you can just see the definition then of the the wall you know the the inlays and the and the structural part of the of the side wall and again we're not using the stark brown and kind of using a gray greeny color it just it just works really well for really light interiors especially if you're doing sort of um German armor with the sort of light uh, light colored interiors It just complements it really well. It's quite a neutral colour. So the other thing I've got off screen, obviously, as you can see, this is a very used piece of kitchen roll or napkin. But I've, you know, gone through this again a few times. But I'll keep going over it. It's less is more when it comes to your thinners, so you can just. You know, your aim is, is not to reactivate it and take it, you know, take it all back off. It's just to sharpen it up. Again, always just dip your brush in, clean the brush out, take any excess paint off you don't want. So you can, you know, manipulate this, make stains and... streaking if needs be if that's what you want and also as you can see on that bit there we're getting a bit of a filter so it's just dirtying that panel up a bit not too overpowering that it takes away from the base colour which is what you don't want so there we go and again if you're not happy you just just get some clean um, odorless, odorless thinner, and remove it. 
done a few of the panels as well while I've just been so these are rear doors look and obviously you can see how that just emphasizes the door handles and the the fixings there and again if you if you're not happy with the framing the other trick is as well then that's really like pump up the contrast is to repaint obviously the um the parts that are uh, you know sticking out so you can go over that again to tidy that up with a paintbrush okay there's the back door look so then just just gain that warning look so the other thing is see if i've got a little bit of on my palette let's have a look again this is an abteal long earth brown all right so you've got a sort of a light mud color okay and then what we'll do is is if you just brush them on the bottom of the door okay so i've just done that dry that's not thing so you've got full control clean thinners again and then just remove what you don't want let's go to a dirty staining or whatever you want to call it to the bottom of the door and like dirty effects like you have a bit of a filter like so so you look and just looks like the door's been you know because it, where it is in the back of the ambulance you know people going in and out and stuff it's it's uh just makes it look a bit sort of worn and, and dirty so when that's fitted in to the actual orifice once you've obviously done the rest of it as well oops to tie it all together there you go you have some nice effects So there you go just a quick demo on oil paint um, pin washing and again just just thinking about what colors you use and, and if they complement actually your base tones so next job for me is to finish pin washing and then we'll come back and we are going to pull out the flory washers that's in the dark dirt and the grimes and whatever else and then we're going to actually make the dirt effects for the floor um, and in the cab as well all right so the main part of the construction is now finished as you can see all the sides and the back doors are placed in there so as you can see all the interior is done as well painted all that got that weathered up it's looking pretty good so next part that, uh, that we'll be doing is taking over to the spray booth and we'll be getting some paint on this so can see looking um, looking rather good everything is loose at the minute obviously not been attached um, but you know that's just for ease of painting so you can see so color going to use is the British dark green which is RC 42 or zero RC 42 because I've laid some color down already so on the scuttle top over onto the top, uh, front the front wings and around the front of this windscreen as well so it can be masked off because obviously that is a split screen so again that's all down and nicely done next obviously is then we'll just get some paint over on the body so like i say i was hoping that we would find out later that the um i wanted to leave the roof part on the cabin roof sort of um, 
as a click fit. Unfortunately, I couldn't actually get it to work. The back roof fits absolutely perfect, but the front one, unfortunately, is uh, is got a bit of a fish tissue somewhere, so that didn't quite work out. So main colours are down, like I say, it's RC42 from Real Colour. Not really done any modulating with this because all the weathering is going to be done at a later date. It's just a bit of an experiment, but actually went down as RC colours do. Absolutely perfect, no problem at all. So, you know, you've got a super smooth sort of um, paint sort of finish to work from. And then, obviously, this is the scheme that, that I'm going to be doing. So, from 1944... Um, again just a bit of colour modulation just to kind of lighten it all back up again just add a variation and some colour tones before we move on to the, to the final weathering <laughs> 